Welcome to our new episode of Speak Revenue. Remember, revenue is not a goal. It's a result. But a result of what? In this show, we turn our eyes from the output towards the inputs. We speak to sales leaders and entrepreneurs about their journeys. Join us on our quest to uncover and learn the root causes of success. Let's unpack what works for them and what didn't. Today, with our guest, Susanne Sperling. Hi, Susanne. Great to meet you. Welcome to the show. Hi, thank you. I'm glad to be here. Right. Awesome. So let us know, who are you? What do you do? What makes it so successful? I'm the founder of Stratec Media. It's a company that helps uh, online publishers. I see myself as a publisher ambassador. I want to help out smaller media websites making more money on their content. I have a background in online media. I've been working at Bolt Decay football website for the last 15 years in Denmark. I ended my tenure there as chief commercial officer and also as the CFO. I have for the 15 years worked in programmatic advertising and, and figured out the best way to monetize the website traffic that we have, uh, figured out what sort of revenue streams can an online media use and what not to use, what works, what didn't work and how to optimize in general for online medias. Great. May we know how or why did you follow this path to found your own business and consult other companies? Over the years, I have met a lot of different publishers who create really amazing content, but actually didn't know much about how to monetize on that content. What they're good at is creating good stories and for people to come and read. Or maybe they're really good at focusing on SEO and how to find them, but not really understanding so much how, how you make money on the traffic. Also because it's right. really hard or it can be difficult to understand how to do so. And I have helped some of those publishers along the way at my time at Bud. And I've always thought that it was a bit sad that they didn't understand it better. Or um, I always felt like I could help them out or that if they knew just a little bit more, they would probably be better off in terms of revenue generation. And I think for me, after by after ending at Bold Decay, I thought that maybe that's what I should do because I actually really love ad tech and I love programmatic and I love optimization. So I was like, and these are the things that I'm really good at. And so it's like, maybe I should help other people uh, make more money or at least try to understand how they could make more money. Sounds great. Why do you think that monetizing content is not a core skill of publishers? Why should uh, maybe underestimated? I think it's underestimating in general. I, it, it's not a, okay. you can go to school and you can have marketing. And what does that mean? Yeah. It means like, how do you brand yourself and how do you get, how to create advertising? But the thing is for publishers, like once those advertising are created, how do they get on your website? So this is not a subject ever, like how to optimize on revenue on website. That is not a subject being taught. When I started out at Bolt, I think it was a lot easier. It probably took a little bit more manpower, but it's more like we got like a fax, right? And be like, hi, I have to buy 1 million impressions of this yeah. and this brand for this and this period. And you put it in a system and that's it, right? That was a little bit difficult in itself, but it was only like a desktop. And then like we started with mobile and we started with all these different things and this whole cookies and third party cookies and finding users right. at the right time and all these sort of things that involved, it made more and more complex. So today it's not about just putting in some banner. You need to have permission. You need to have GDPR. You need to find the users. You need, there's so many different things that you need to be able to do and understand. And there's so many tech solutions. And there are so many things that you have to, to put on your website. And I think that could be a lot to, to do. So most people will, or most uh, publishers would go to a, to an agency to have that handled. Okay. Let's say uh, I'm a publisher with no idea on how to monetize my content. What would be the first steps you would need to look at and the first optimization steps to start to monetize? First thing you would probably find an agency because you will have yeah. to have some sort of code on your website and figuring out where to put your ads and so on. But what I would do, if I looked at your website, there was ads on it. I think I would try to understand like what prices are you getting for your ads? Mm -hmm. 
what has been tested are you sold out and is sold out now you're saying like revenue is the result right for me sold out is not a goal in itself because that is just you know then you're sold too cheap right so right. what balance and how many banners at what price is the optimum okay. for you and try to have a play on that those were be the first things I would look at when you go to a lot of websites, you see a lot of ads and it's sad story that the more ads, the more money you're making, but, but you shouldn't really look at the ads in itself. You should look at the page view or itself, like how much money can you make on this? And maybe let's say you could only have one banner or one ad on your website, but you got 1 trillion for it, right? What if that was sold out? What was the highest price you can get? And then figure it out that way okay. from there. Okay, then we add a little bit more. Is that incremental value? Yes or no? And I think there's a lot of ads that are non-incremental value on the website. And what does it do? It actually probably annoys the users a little bit more than it does uh, give you revenue. Or And that in itself could maybe have the user uh, read less. So what you want to do is find that balance of creating new page views and having the ads by not annoying, but just supporting uh, supporting the content. So that's how you start optimizing. Is there any framework or a personal approach you follow on optimization in general? Yeah, I can always look at like, where does the user go? How far on your site does it scroll? Mm -hmm. Have you thought about, are people scrolling down? When will you call your ads? How much of an ad should you be seen? Are you choosing ad sizes that are the standard? So how would that be? If, make sure to have that. Is it mobile friendly? It, it's still a lot of people still look at desktop, right? But most traffic are from mobile. Mobile has an issue because it has less space, less ad space. And so make sure that they are placed correct in the viewability of the ads. And it is really important that all ads are 70% viewable. So what does that mean is that you have to see 70% mm -hmm. of the ad or like in general, right? In order for it to make money. And I think for most of the people creating content, they have contextual targeting that they're not maybe necessarily thinking about. They are sending a contextual signal and should try to find out which ads would make most sense for them. And also talking to their agency about that, if there's something they can do there. Yeah. What is your strategic advice on targeting the ICP or get the right the target group on your website or on any um, publisher's website? I think it's hard because you can't, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think yeah. anyone who would tell you that you could find someone who likes small dogs or something like that, if someone has bought that, they've just been lied to. So as a publisher, you should figure out like, what is my core? What do I know about my users? And this is the whole first party mm -hmm. data that everyone is talking about now and find a strategy for that. What is it that you have? and find a way to position that and sell that. So if you're writing about computer articles of, you know, like what are these sort of people, what could work here, what ads would go best here and not just getting random ads in. So I think for publishers, this whole idea about understanding their users and try to tell that story better um, will be key for them, but also for the agencies or for the marketing people, because they can't keep finding people. Do you think this is one of the main challenges to target the, the ICP or is there, what are the other main challenges that your clients are facing? I think that is a huge challenge. And if everyone is in yeah. this challenge of figuring out like how to get ads in front of people, how can we do mm -hmm. this with the consents? And so therefore you also have so many people do subscription models and paywalls because it's getting harder and harder to get the revenue from the advertisers. Yes to pay enough. And so we must find mm -hmm. another way to make money on our revenue or on our content. So a lot of brands, if you're big enough, can try subscription because then you mm -hmm. get first party data and have that as something that you could position yourself of having or paywall. However, I am a free internet believer. I will still vote for or hope for that a lot of websites choose not to do paywall. I don't a subscription in itself, like just signing in and logging in. I, you think you can get someone to do that for free and I get free content on that. I think it's amazing. And you should definitely do that because having that is very important and crucial. 
But I think for a lot of publishers, um, having someone signing up and giving away your data is just not something that we're ready to do at this moment. And for them, okay. it will still be advertising or digital advertising that needs to support them. Yep, it's really difficult because I've seen news sites that are only publishing to subscribers. So if you want to watch any of those news articles, it's behind a paywall. You're just not able maybe to see the first five sentences, but I don't even know how good is the quality. And I, I think it's really hard. Maybe they believe that the fact that there is a subscription signals that quality is higher, but as a user, I'm just not sure that there must be some basic model to try out and see what, how the actual content looks like. Yeah, I agree. And like, I, I think they will do it because they believe it's premium content. However, I think I would like to oh, maybe read about this, but why don't I could be given an option of watching an ad instead. I would do it. And maybe they could monetize on that. And I think it's uh, for a lot of the big publishers, this is something you can do. And you know, we all been having uh, paid for newspapers when we were younger and getting that in the mail. So it's normal that we pay for news, but for me now it's everywhere but it's mostly news that are blocking. So I think it's also something about like all the information that people are spending their time on, on creating and giving, this is not just not for everyone anymore, right? And there is a yeah. limit to how many things we can subscribe to. There is a money limit for most people. And then for most people just being like, okay, I'm not watching it or I'm not reading it or I'll find my news somewhere else. And then we're back to what sort of news are we then finding? Yeah, that it's, it just adds up. There's Netflix and maybe Apple TV and yeah. maybe the preferred web news side. But it, yeah, sure, it's limited. And I see some analogy to startups or SaaS business, actually, because it can be hard to get people pay from the beginning on. So there, it is a strategy that works to get things for free as much yeah. as possible and just bill for the things that are really valuable. So many companies, not only starts up, but, ups, but also the established SaaS companies like Kong are going this way, giving f f so much material for free that can help sales teams to be, become more efficient. What do you think? Is there some analogy on with that respect to the publishing sector? I'm not sure. I'm here. The analogy of making money is, is always there on, on creating yeah, start, on the basic, startups. So um, the basic thought of giving things for free to, to build trust mm. and to prove the, in this case, the content is really valuable to get people to really buy the product in the end. What I've seen is for SaaS products or I, I've been buying a lot of SaaS for many yep. years um, and that process in itself have changed a lot because I used to be, be like, yeah, sure. Let me try that. And oh, please. And like the meetings were longer and now it's easier to say yes to meeting. It's been harder for me to say yes to meetings because money was tighter or I had a lot of knowledge. So they needed to approach me in a different way. And a lot of the time they would just show me something and be like, I know more about this than you do or not necessarily, but like, you need to come up with a little bit more knowledge or show me the value really quick. Yeah. Because if I had to choose, there's so many products to choose from, right? So in that way, I think they're struggling a lot and they do a lot of free period and they have changed their sales processes a lot to, to optimize on that. I definitely believe that that had have been an issue for them. Right. Mm. Um, but however, for publishers also have so many different people approaching them and saying, I can sell this, I can sell that, or let me help you with that. And it is a vast jungle to, to figure out a way of choosing the right tech for your website. Mm. Definitely. Yeah, it's, it you've mentioned it becomes more and more complex to monetize content with different devices, different technologies evolving. Maybe even AI has an impact on that as well. What is and maybe apart from subscription models or ads, a, a, any innovative approach you have in mind to monetize content for publishers? Something new coming up? No. It's flatlined. Now, I think it's actually still the same. It's weird. Ads will okay. never go away, mm -hmm. but I think it's always about finding out like how to find a new way to position. And okay. I was just briefly discussed before newsletters are funny enough back. They were a huge thing in 10, 11, then it went away and then newsletter coming back. Um, and I think a lot of publishers are focusing yep. on that. That is again, the sign mm -hmm. up. 
but it's getting into position ads in front of people and getting their emails, right? The data monetization has been talked about a lot, but not really happening yet. But the first party data of showing what kind of users and selling that and in a privacy legal way. Native advertising and sponsored content has been around for a long time. However, we will see more and more about it because once you get that on your website, it is so tailored to your website and the contextual targeting or contextual situation that the brand will be in is so relatable and has a bigger impact for the brands. And for brands, in order to make sure that their advertising gets on the website or get to the users that they want to, contextual targeting is it will be the best way to do in the future. So if you are the Sue yeah. kids family and like, how do you find kids family? If there's something mm -hmm. kids are us or something like people writing about kids stuff, you'll make sure that kids advertising get there or something like that, or that these are families looking at those websites. So I think we'll just see more of that. Okay. Yeah. So it's rather about already established methods and but they are yeah. evolving and orchestrated in different ways. Yeah. And I think like right now you, we are talking a lot about retail media will be up and coming. And then the next one would be commerce media, whereas like commerce media is like the blend of content, e-commerce, um, digital advertising, that's so blending it all away. Mm -hmm. So let's say you have a cooking website or a, what's called recipe website, right? Um, should you have a web shop? Probably. Yeah, because you're might using some ingredients. What kind of pants are you using? What kind of right. pots and using a special salt? Is that something that you should be able to buy? Should the ads be there for them to buy that? And should you be able to shop the ingredients at some online store and the whole like mesh of all this, it was called commerce media. And I think that will be the next, it will be the next step. That is something to yeah, talk yeah. about now. Right? So you just have to look at your website as more than just providing news. I think it's an interesting question. If somebody doesn't know how to monetize, but knows, hey, my USP is I'm a good writer and, but I need to monetize somehow. I need to pay my bills. Are the publishers in general, are they really willing to apply new methods to really monetize or are they rather hesitating because it's not their core business? I think once you get to talk to them, I think they find it very interesting and are more interested in what can I improve? How can I do that? Because at the end of the day, yeah. they want to make more money or they want to generate more revenue for themselves, hopefully, or most likely. And of course it's about hopefully, time, yeah. hopefully, or I don't know if I hope that, but it makes more sense. Yeah, I think for a lot of them it's about time and having that understanding. So I think that is like, yeah. as my self-proclaimed publisher ambassador is what I want to do is try to find a way to educate publishers so that they can be better in charge of the revenue because in the day they are outsourcing their whole revenue stream, which seems a bit extreme. They, they know what they're really good at, but you know, the making the money part, they, if they don't understand that at all, that's a very vulnerable situation and can't be taken yeah. advantage of very easy. Yeah, it can really be difficult because there are so many jobs yeah, like publishers or also, let's say pharmacists or doctors, all of them running a business actually, but they don't have big business knowledge and it can be yeah. hard to really make them aware that it's important. Yeah. But it's also about what are you doing? Are you like making a business or growing a business or are you running a business? You know what I mean? Yes. So if you're running a yep. business, you're sort of like doing everything yourself and figure that out. And I think that's fine. If you're growing a business, of course, it's fine to outsource some of these things, but making sure you understand why you're doing it and how to do that best. So you can take a step back and actually have that time. But if you're running it yourself, learn how to do it. I am a startup and there is many things I have no clue about what to do, but thankfully for me, like I really know what I'm not good at. Right. So I yeah. know what I need help yeah. with today. Right. That is my forte. Right. And you've been a CFO. You know, that's, that's always a, pretty, a start. Pretty, pretty good thing. 
it's a pretty good thing. And I think also like when I talk to publishers and like my role as a chief commercial officer and the CFO is a weird thing. So I'm money and, and the CFO, but what this means for me is all about the optimization. So like, are we spending more money and then just earning more money? That is not a goal, right? So it's like, how can we earn more money and not spend more or like the incremental value of, of making more money should always be there. Yeah. And we have AI. Now we talked a little about AI earlier on what that can do for publishers and how uh, maybe it can create some content, but there's also like for many websites, maybe have a forum, you can use it for moderation. Maybe uh, you can help them with that. Like AI can use you for different things. So is that a monetization strategy? Yes, but it could also be a cost saving strategy. And that is in my book, just as valuable because I'm looking at the website as a total. Um, yeah. Great. I think the deeper we go into this topic, the more I would like to continue. Maybe one last question. Is there anything you would like to share on yeah, like a, a basic guidance for publishers, something they should really be aware of? I think they should actually try to take the time and go into whatever dashboard it is that they are using yeah. the tool to monetize their, their website and try to see if they actually understand what's in there check a quiz or understand what is CPM or what is the ECBC and the VCPM and the DMD and the CDR or GDPR. What are these things? Yeah. Do they understand them? And if they're not, go to their agency, go to the platform, have them walk them through them so they equip themselves better to understand how to make money or what is working on their website. It could be that some of their traffic or some of their websites are you are spending a lot of time reading an article or people or staying longer there, but you're not refreshing your ads, then refresh your ads on that one. So you make double yep. the money. Maybe you shouldn't do on the front page because people are not spending time there. Try to see if there's just some small adjustment that you can do and understand that and then see how far that will get to you. But I think it's just try to understand it a little bit or get, take back some of the power so that you're able to be like, why is my CPM so low or what are you doing for this and this? Can we do cookie list banners? How mm -hmm. many of my ads are served on Safari with no cookies? How much are we depending on Chrome traffic? Such questions I think are so important because okay. a lot of the advertising money are actually going in Chrome and not in Safari browsers because of the cookies. Yeah. So really understand your business, analyze, check the root causes of successes or failures as well. Yeah, I actually do so, right? If revenue is the result, but it's the result of yeah. you equipping exactly. yourself to asking the right questions, right? What is working at my website and what is not working? When am I doing good? Why was, why were we doing good here? Right? Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. I think that brings us to the end of the episode. So I want to thank our guest, Susanna Sperling for joining us today, sharing such valuable insights. You shout out to all our listeners. Your support means the world to us. Remember to check out our website at speakrevenue.com for a full transcript and additional resources. If you enjoyed the show, please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you go for your listening needs. It really helps get the word out. Also follow us on LinkedIn and Insta or on YouTube. We'll be back soon with another great guest. Until then, stay curious and keep listening. Mm -hmm.